What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3 and you can see I have built a, another rocket. This rocket, hopefully, is going to take one of our duplicates down to the gas planet. Gazdilla or whatever it's called. Again, until it actually we get there. I'm not going to name it properly because I can't remember. So we have the trailblazer which allows the duplicate to obviously get to the surface without the rocket platform. We have three rovers and then everything else is standard. So the idea hopefully is that we load it down. We will have um, three rovers of support though they can't dig everything but they're better than nothing so they'll be able to help dig ladders etc. Um, they'll also help or be able to help open any capsules that we send over from uh, this asteroid. Um, and the Trailblazer and the the, the rovers can actually be dismantled for resources as well. Uh, cargo bay for additional resources, iron specifically, and then we can use the interplanetary sender for whatever we need. We need to be able to set up over there. There should be chlorine or variants of chlorine, all of which... We, of course, want to bring back. Retrofitting the rocket there, as long as we have the resources, is what I'm going to do. So, of course, it's going as it looks now, but it will not be coming back as such. And that should be good to go now. Stocked up with food, oxygen and water, of course, making sure everything was capped out because it is going to be the duplicate's home for however long it takes to do what we need to do. That is land, dig, retrofit the rocket, fill it and come home. In terms of oxygen and food, we're not we've got no problems there. It's the resources that are likely to cause us issues. Um, again, we can send it from here, that is not a problem, but we just need to make sure that he or she survives when actually arriving at the planet. It's got the gassy moves as well, so I'm hoping to try and steal some of those and some of the food that they require, which is the gas grass. So we also need to try and get some gas grass seeds, some gassy moves if possible, uh, some liquid chlorine and solid frozen chlorine. That is the mission. There may be other resources on the on the asteroid that are, are good, but I, I don't know until we actually get there and uncover it. Looks like that rocket has finished doing its scanning. There are no longer any of the telescope type things back for that. The one at the top there, you can see it's still going. There, you can see that icon is showing that it's still scanning, but this one is not. So we'll just change that and let him come straight back home. Whether we can send it out somewhere else is debatable for now though we of course need to leave that second one to scan they just it just uncovered another thing now i'm not sure if the empty hexagon tiles ever have anything on them or if they're just literally always empty there are question marks of course but there is more than just the question marks somewhere is the temporal shift as well temporal rift not shift um, but yeah, that is, again, and it'll be the first time I ever go through it if we get there, so that'll be exciting. And I'm not sure if you send one person through or all of them, similar to RimWorld, right, when you leave the planet. In the base game win, if you send five out of ten people, you get the five survive and the ten stay on the planet. So we'll see. I'm sure we'll get there. Time is of the essence, making sure I remove the Atmo suits. And there's two reasons for that. One is that when it runs out, they then can't breathe properly and it gives them the move debuff because they're trying to take the helmet off and breathe. More importantly is when they arrive on an asteroid or a planet, they at least then have an Atmo suit to survive on the planet for at least half a cycle um, where they can still breathe because the oxygen is in the suit. Whereas if you drain it unnecessarily, them staying in it, it wastes it. You can see I'm just going through all of these asteroid fields of resources to see if there's anything we want. Coal, molten, tungsten, molten iron, copper ore, obsidian. All of these things we have plenty of and not requiring. We're looking for end game resources only uh, and the end game temporal rift. Uh, 
Okay, so about three cycles, three days later, I have moved over the, it's a lot smaller, which is why it was easy to build. Uh, only three of the generators, the coolers as well. And that is now under there. You can see I've ripped out the one that I did. I kind of ham hammered it, hammered it out, just chain deleted it. The liquids then fell to the surface. The chlorine, of course, gassed out. Uh, the ethanol just landed on the floor. I can come and pick it up if I need it, but at the minute we've got plenty. So at least now it is under the rocket platforms and ready to go. It also means that when we get to this planet and asteroid and we come back with any chlorine that we can drop it off here as well and store it here as expected. Now that bleach stone is on the metal tile. That metal tile is very cold as well to help keep that but although it is like negative 60 of course that is a lot warmer than what the frozen chlorine is at negative 140 so it should still work if you notice i cheesed the uh, hydrogen as well i just broke open that side plate there and it's just pushing through yes it's warm but there's no issues with temperatures or heat you can see it immediately comes in there and, it, and it's immediately cooled so it's also generating a bit of power I could have put in a pipe, but I thought, why not? I'm not using this hydrogen for anything else, so maybe in the future I will use it um, for the liquid hydrogen. But to be honest, I think we've got more than enough stored because we're generating hydrogen from the electrolysis, splitting H2O water into hydrogen and oxygen. seems to be working i didn't have many resources so i lost quite a bit when i just ripped out the other one I, i'll be honest i couldn't be bothered to do it fancy or do it efficiently especially knowing that we've got an asteroid that's got what we need on it when we get there of course until we get back i'm not going to be able to test it properly still waiting on anybody knowing any uh, plans of efficiency looking at the map we've got two rockets in flight one going home which is, yeah, that's that last rocket, right? The, yeah, solid methane. I'm not sure what we could do with methane. But you can see we've got fluorine unlocked there in the asteroid field. So that is something that we are going to have a mission to go to. We need a driller to get out there and collect that fluorine. I just don't know how I'm going to get to it and back again. Because at the minute I don't have the range. Here we are. We are in the orbit of Gasil. The gas moo planet and the planet that has a crap ton of chlorine allegedly for us. So let's get down there. Now I need to land all of the rovers and myself somewhere where we can interact together at the very least without having to do too much digging. Of course ladders and stuff aren't something we can dig straight off the back because there's not that resource there. So we need to try and get them. Now, you do have to do them one by one. I tried doing it, all three of them, when it would pause, but it don't work. Uh, you have to do it, wait for one to leave, and then do the next one. So here they go. I'm staying to the right of that very steep cliff there in the hope that we can make that work. And then the trailblazer coming down for myself. Now, this is where it gets serious. And I made quite a large mistake. Rovers are down. We can open these capsules, of course. As I said, you need to reload in order for that to work. But then there's the mistake I made. I didn't put the Atmos suit on the dupe. So the dupe now has as long as it takes for him to hold his breath to survive. We need to get a rocket platform built. Um, so we need to reload the game to unlock the ability to get the resources out of them drops. Luckily, we've got the rovers to help us do that. We then need to build a rocket platform and get the rocket to land on the platform and a ladder or a pipe for the duplicate to get in. So jumping forward there, just a very briefly you saw because that was just me reloading. All of the things are set to unload and the robots are doing that. Every time you click something, they kind of twitch and unload. It's weird. The duplicate Max is already on his way over. I'm just going to make sure he has the ability to dig because the chlorine is quite hard, apparently. Luckily, the rocket platform doesn't need to be on any actual significant, what do you call it, um, structure. You can make it float in the air, apparently, which is odd, but 
I'm not going to argue with it because it helps us out here. And then because you can build poles with a cobalt ore, but I can't build ladders and I haven't got the resources to build ladders and building the pole. They can climb up it, but it's slower. But Max is now on about, what, 60% holding breath. The rocket platform is there. I've told the rocket to land. I need to get him out of there so he doesn't get set on fire uh, by a rocket exhaust, of course. So Max, run. And we have the pipes almost finished. That might be enough. Like I say, this is where put in the cabin thing as low down on the rocket as possible, i.e. just above the engine, is a lifesaver. If that wasn't the case, this wouldn't have ended like it has. Also to note, um, there's a lot of chlorine burnt out there because of the rocket. So, Max, there, getting oxygen. Now back, you can see there is an Atmos suit there as well. More importantly though, we saved him. Yay me. It was my fault in the first place, but it's always nice to actually have these critical time-sensitive things come to fruition in uh, a, a matter that actually matters. So now we're on the planet. We can see there is a load of liquid chlorine. Below that liquid chlorine, there is also a load of frozen chlorine. There is no gassy moose. Now, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be on the, on the asteroid when you turn up, but they also arrive by meteor strike. So when there is a meteor strike, we will get them. Don't panic. So, th first things first. We are going to dig down into the planet to try and get some form of structure. There is two relics there as well. I can cheese those. You can use the move it tool to ask the duplicate to move them into the shuttle. I'm not going to use a relic carrier or anything. Um, but we are going to be here for a while. Because we need to get power. We need batteries. We need pumps. All of them uh, fields or puddles of liquid chlorine need to be collected and stored in a chamber in the rocket. We also need to try and collect as much of the solid chlorine as possible, the frozen chlorine that's further down. So we are going to be here for a while, relying on the duplicate Max to use the Fera module as his home. Um, everything he will have to do, of course, means holding the breath. It is a bit brutal, but it works. Also, there are gassy seeds you can see that have been shown now as new on the resource panel. And all I'm going to do is quickly just dig out a little bit to get them where I want. So I want to get into that area there. There will likely be a data bank in there hiding as well on that computer desk because we can inspect it. There's them two relics I'd like to get as well. And then I'll probably use that as where I'm going to put some power stations. Now, we don't have all the resources required to build these things, so I will need to go home and get some sent over soon. In the meantime, I, make, I need to make sure, though, that they have enough tasks to do so I can leave them to it while I get them sent. So progress made here. There's a lot of natural gas. I don't care about it, though. Don't need it. Don't want it. It will be a bit awkward for the duplicate. Again, it will give them eye irritation, um, similar to what chlorine does. Uh, and hydrogen, I think. But, again, they will survive. They'll just be a bit sad about it. All of these capsules need opening up. Most of them will be... I think it's iron. Or there may be some coal there as well. Because I've sent iron over. I've sent coal over. The resource we require is a metal ore now to make... Yeah, the actual generators. We have refined metal, so I can put a smart battery in to not waste the coal. Um, and obviously Max you can see they're injured due to that fire as I said when it landed it's not done him no good but he's still going he's a trooper he may get a schnazzy suit we'll see what I need to do now though is start getting the robots to deliver the resources they, they can build it as well so the ladders that's what they're good for but a lot of the digging is going to be out of their remit. I said we've had this discussion before. But this is an example of where they're useful, right? Because I don't think we would have survived without them in terms of the building and moving the resources about. Plus, what they're doing now as well is very useful. Delivering resources. And if you build a storage vessel like I did, they'll also try and clean up a bit for you as well. Now, I can't demolish these because you need the demolition trait and I'm not giving him that it's three tiers up uh, and that will screw his morale over quite significantly 
So I'll leave them where they are for now. You can actually move them and I'll do that later. But for now, I'm not interested. As you can see, the robots are delivering resources, which is wonderful. Um, but we do need a lot more cobalt ore sending over in order to build the coal generator. Um, some of the wires. And that is what I'm going to do now. So it is already set for Gazil, as the asteroid is called. You can see we've still got a quite a nice backup of coal to send. Probably don't need that much, so I can close this off. To stop it, you just kind of turn it off and it drops it back on the floor. And then one of the sweepers will clean that up and send it back to the resources. What I actually need is cobalt ore. Manual allow and then set that up so that people come over. I don't know a good way of sending only like... If I wanted to just send 5k, how to do that. Uh, there may be an automation... I need to look into it. But at the minute, I basically, I've got so many people that they'll just send too much. So I have to micromanage it a little bit. And, of course, we have a huge issue with everything overheating. The power's out, so we're not actually getting any red bolts. So I need to fix that because we can't send the, the ore until that is fixed. So this is where the conduction panels come in. And these are... Well, these allow extreme temperature changes between the buildings that they are put behind, including and within a vacuum. So if I put the transformers on top of them like so and put water or liquid through, it will take the heat away and it will allow them to continue to run without them overheating. I will need to do the same to the actual red bolt generators but luckily they are made from sandstone i think it is which has a melting point of 900 degrees and it's not going to get to that anytime soon so i get a bit more time with those but the actual transformers being made of metal will heat up significantly quicker and have a significantly lower damage point and therefore need to be done now in order to for us to progress. Remember that the Radbolt generators, if at any point you deactivate them or disable them, or they lose power, they reset to zero. And they are really, really slow. So it's important to try and make sure that infrastructure around that sort of setup doesn't fail often, because you just reset to zero and have to start all over again. Now I am purposely letting some of the hydrogen gas out of the base I say base, out of there anyway, into this top section so I can use this top section as a cooler. The pipes will then go into these two rooms in the, in the higher up area where it's just empty space and gas off. The problem is, you can see, the reason the gas is doing that sporadic movement is because, yes, it's being deleted by the vacuum of space. It's not supposed to because there is wallpaper there. But maybe the wallpaper's a bit bugged. Bit of testing after jumping forward. We've got the pipes in now and you can see, yes, the, the wallpaper is, is bugged to a point. Some of them, depending on what they're made of, um, work. Some of them don't. So although I went for the colours I wanted, they're blue ones. One of them was oxalite and one of them was plastic they do not count as a seal just using standard drywall in there now as you can see and it is fully sealed which means you can see that pipe that goes in there it just takes that heat away and it helps keep the transformers cool which means the power will continue and everything will work you can see a huge amount now of capsules fired out because they did obviously in the time that we did all this well, it was actually the, the drywall that took forever. And then I built the ladders up. And then I had to delete them all and blah, blah, blah. Cleaning up's easy because there's a sweeper in there. But I had to build it and then dismantle it all. But um, we did get some red box charged up. It is working. That is storing them as well, which is good. There is a downside that they fire at the same time. And they fire actually so fast that it still ruins or uh, wastes some. When it fires it into the interplanetary loader, it fires more than the 200 and the rest just hits the floor and it wastes it so i am going to have to think of a way around that soon but for now it's allowed us to send over a lot of the resources that we need towards gasil uh, and we'll have to obviously wait for them to arrive luckily they fly a lot faster 
than a rocket because you're using a railgun. So a railgun's pretty powerful. As we all know, if we've seen railguns in real life, they are impressive. In fact, they're so powerful, every time they fire, they damage themselves. So that's interesting news. Now, this drill rocket, you can see, has got the special upgraded drill cone in there, as, as well as the large cargo bay, which holds, I think it's 50 tons. I don't think that actually is. I think, I, yeah, I probably haven't done that yet. But anyway, you can see I'm struggling for space in order to make it so it can travel far. And get back without having to set up a new base on another planet. Currently, I'm looking for the fluorine. It is there on the right-hand side, top right-hand side, just out off the center, which is this yellow patch of asteroid field. That is where the fluorine is. And that is where, yes, there. That is where we're aiming to head to. So I need to get there. Which you can see that is sort of two, four, six, eight. It's about nine or ten tiles. But then I'd need to get back. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use that planet in between or asteroid in between, that cold water asteroid in between. Or is there actually a way of traveling, having enough fuel to, to travel that distance? That is what I'm still trying to figure out. And again, any comments in the meantime would be appreciated to that fact. But for now, I'm winging it. And after about half a cycle... It's a quarter to about half a cycle it takes. You can see loads of these capsules now arrived. These will include coal and cobalt ore uh, and maybe a bit of steel. But I'm not sure if I've sent the steel yet or not. But this is mainly, it's basically coal and cobalt ore. This is to set up a power station with a smart battery and some automation, which all requires refined metals, which we already have. At that point, we can then start building pipes and pumps to pump out this liquid. Retrofit the rocket and get us collecting a lot of the chlorine that we've been so struggling for up until this point. But we will have to do that in the next episode because we are at time. So thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.